Warriors. Yeah. We're going to see what exactly is going to be happening with that ban as we'll go to Infernal Shrines instead as the draft is ready to start. And of course, we're still looking at three bans in total, so that's going to spice things up still a bit. Last week was already really interesting with that. Teams have been talking about how they need to adjust to the shorter timers a little bit on the bans and the picks, and we have seen quite a few adjustments on that part too. But yeah, I'm curious to see what monkeys can do today. They Do they come in with strategies that will throw Fnatic off in any way? And how is Fnatic going to present themselves here? Because they have been doing better and better. They still have a bit of a problem, of course, with the matches that they won and lost. But if you just look at their play, they have actually been looking pretty solid. So the question today is, can they clinch out 3-0? Is it going to be 3-1? Or will the monkey surprise? A common ban against Fnatic. The Haka coming in here. One of the heroes that Last Hope can excel on whenever he is in that selection. However, he's able to back up onto other heroes as needed. Urel, Blaze, has become a mainstay yeah. for him. He also plays a lot of Leoric, and his Leoric uh, game is really not too bad, except for the one game that, of course, stood out last weekend when against Dignitas. He had huge problems landing in tombs, was talking about very openly about it on Twitter later, and said that he felt the pressure, and it was one of those things that he had a bit of trouble dealing with. So that was definitely a bit of a letdown for them. But still, he usually plays the hero pretty well, and uh, today I would expect them not to go as that deep into the Let's Dive Reyna strategy, but the day is young. Yeah. Heart goes out of last hope, though. Being in those situations where towards the end where you're trying to clutch it for your team and just missing out on the opportunity multiple times, he felt very bad about it, and I'm sure he put a lot of work into it this week to make sure he is ready to go in case they do have to rely on that Leora, because they entered it on an interesting composition. That was a full dive comp with the Valir set up, and it almost paid off for them. Decker came first picked here for Fnatic, over to the Monkeys. Rainer will be a first pick for them. And that is actually what triggered Fnatic's composition, uh, the dive onto Rainer with that Mayev setup that they had. Mm. So uh, Urel taken as a side laner here, very high priority, and for very good reason. She's looking very powerful still. We have seen other teams prioritize the global in the form of the Haka, but in general, Ural is doing fantastic in HGC Europe, currently sitting at 34 wins and 22 losses, so a 61% win rate for her. Now, Rainer, this is before he gets nerfed in the live patch. He has taken some damage reductions, so he's still putting out a pretty decent amount of pepper. Garrosh and Medivh coming in for Fnatic, looking for the ability to portal in and get taunts, and the idea is very similar against Raynor. Get on top of that target ASAP. But one hero that can do that, Medivh. Put a portal right on top of him, have Garrosh going afterwards, go for a toss, or even a straight up taunt. Monkey, 100% win rate confirmed here. Fnatic, no one believes in them at this point. Uh, I, I guess that's uh, the poll that just got started. That being <laughs> said... one person has voted right now. <laughs> that being said, um, Medivh is actually pretty cool to see it here for Fnatic because that's a hero that they struggled against when especially Snitch played him. So uh, it's going to be a pretty cool, like Snitch and also ADR already played it last weekend and both of them had a lot of success with it. So uh, now Fnatic picking up on the Medivh train too. Really like that. The ban against Phoenix here on the side of the monkeys. As we are seeing slowly and steadily, the pole change slightly. Zeratul banned out. This is something that we've also seen done against the monkeys. Mm -hmm. Alex is willing to move into Zeratul if he needs to. And uh, he can actually be kind of scary on it, especially with the late game. I mean, Zeratul, even if you're not the best player in the world, once you hit that level 16 spike, if your opponents group up, you can put out a lot of damage really quickly. What do you mean? I thought Alex is the best player in the world. I mean, I was just saying that at a in theory. broad term. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Alex is definitely the best player in the world. You want to take that away. But if you ever been Zeratul, not too bad of yeah. a choice. If you regularly 1v9, then you have to be. Mm -hmm. Garrosh Medivh already picked up from here, but on the other side we got Murden and Alex Straza. Alex? I mean, she's getting up. She just lives here, so, yeah. Uh, first of all, Infernal Shrines is definitely her map. We've mm. seen her and others too. Volskaya comes a bit to mind where occasionally she's been playing as well. But this is definitely now a setup where we expect her to be, uh, to be appearing. And Gul'dan plus Sonya. We've been talking last week a bit about Sonya. You in particular mentioned that you are missing her, and this is the best map for her. Yeah. Team Liquid actually plays her a lot on Infernal Shrines, with mixed results so far, though. I'm worried there might be a little bit too much CC for her already. You have Raynor, you have Urel, you have Muradin, ways to stop her from spinning to win. And this is also a new pickup for Last Hope in particular. He hasn't yeah. played Sonya yet. We'll see how that pays off for them. Final pick comes in, it will be Thrall. Lots of Shrine Control, lots of Engage here for the Monkeys. And again, a triple front line to protect Reyna, and of course also a lot of CC and control that we have with that. Urel to push the opponent back, you have Thrall that can stop them with the Wolf and also the Earthquake, really applying a lot of slows that Reyna then can capitalize on too. 
So, yeah. From a draft perspective, there's definitely a game plan for the Monkeys. They have Alexstrasza with that. They can heavily dominate that front line, try to create the space for Reyna to dish out the damage. Only question that still remains is can Reyna stay safe, especially considering that you have Medivh against exactly. you. You can always try to portal onto him with Garrosh as the follow-up uh, with Taunt after level 10. Yep, that is definitely the uh, Yahtzee card here for Fnatic, being able to have Medivh to set up those kills, having Sonya or Garrosh go for the back line. But if Reyna can get through it all, and there are tools for him to stay alive. I actually think monkeys can do something here. It's all about that coordination from Fnatic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Yahtzee card. Yeah. I learned new terms too. Jenga, if things go wrong, I'll start using Jenga instead. That's good. How about we don't do that? Okay. Maybe. We'll think about it. We'll think about it. No, we won't. I thought about it already. <laughs> yeah. Sign against I, it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe a little bit more thought, you know? Maybe, okay, maybe sleep on it. Okay, Just sleep on it a little bit. He's thinking. How about no? <laughs> How about no? <laughs> then give me another term to use. Because we gotta we gotta add those new words in, man. People love that part. Uh, what are we looking for? We're arguing for a new word for when things fall apart. Everything that I come up with on the spot is inappropriate, so give me a <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you think on it. <laughs> yes, let me think on that. Let's go ahead and game number one here as we're ready for Infernal Shrines Best of Five series. Fnatic looking for a win here as they want to keep their chances and hopes of going to the Western Clash alive. And we're talking, first of all, about the monkeys on the left side here in our first game where we see Crosby on Jimmy playing Reyna here. Maka finds himself on Thrall with Alex, of course, rocking URL. Ramabola on the main tank with Muradin and Splendor, last but not least, on Alex Straza. On the right side, in the red, it's Mexi on Deckard Kane, Schwimpy on Mediv, Mene on Gul'dan, Breeze on Garrosh, and Last Hope. Gonna show his Sonya for the first time here in HGC. Synonym for things that are falling apart, mm -hmm. going full in A. No. <laughs> no. I'm not going to think on that. That's not okay. That's rude. <laughs> Is it? That's rude, Kaldor. I thought it was a fact. We like in A here. Don't, don't want to get construed. Oh, it's fun watching it. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Medivh is uh, sharking around now, looking for some setup here. As Fnatic goes to control the middle. Breeze gets a nice little combo off on Alex Approach. He's actually about engaging here. The Avenger Wrath, he jumps in. A little bit of damage out. But already a step up from last week. Remember, in the first 10 seconds of the game, Monkey's actually fed right away. Oh, no. Oh, no, Crosby. Taking yeah, some there. the first 10 seconds of the last best of five that they played were a bit weird. There was a, okay, let's run it down mid-moment. But in this game, so far, no deaths. So the big question here is simply, we're looking at two things. First of all, the Monkeys have definitely struggled a little bit throughout Phase 2. Mm -hmm. They have a single match that they won that was against the Zealots. Outside of that, they're currently the worst team in HCC. If you just look at map wins and map losses, they underperform even in the comparison with Zealots. But they are a team that at times really show moments of genius where, they, where everything comes together and they show up quite strong. But the consistency definitely hasn't really been there yet. For Fnatic, we have seen constant improvement, but they definitely struggle a bit with, in the first few weeks, experimenting too much with their lineup and having a few problems closing series out. So the question for them is, how dominant can they be? And already showing some of the dominance here by them taking out a Thrall as the first blood in the game. Still enjoy seeing Crosby get away from that. That was a gank designed to take him apart. He was able to sneak away, but Maka, not so much, coming over to help provide a root, just to keep his teammate alight. Also, uh, looking at his stacks here, sitting at a total of seven there on the Echo of the Elements. And we have six Stormbolts coming in for Rimmer as he continues to stack up. And one of the things that every single team echoed that faced Fnatic so far is that especially in scrims, they are really impressive, but they have not really had a chance to transition that into HGC. And that puts them into this bad spot in the first place. The idea with this lineup was to attack the number one spot, and they're currently far away from that. They are trying to make it into the Western Clash by winning at least this series, and then, of course, have to rely to the result of Leftovers versus Granite Gaming. So Fnatic right now just trying to do their due diligence to make sure that they are still in a position where that can happen. And for that, they have to take the monkeys down. And a lot is going to depend also on how well is it going to work for them. Is that going to be an easy victory for them? Or do they struggle also against one of the bottom teams within Europe? For now, Fnatic should be set up pretty well here for the Shrine phase. Alex Terraza being on the afflicting side will give them a bit of an issue, though. Dragon Queen always seems to yield the result of a Punisher being taken by the team with her. Fnatic already started that Merc game at the top right, but Monkeys do the same, as in the middle of the lane is where our first shrine will be. 
Yeah, and as you already said, with the Dragon Queen, Alexstrasza can control all of the space here, and it's a fantastic tool if you want to clutch out a Punisher if you're already slightly ahead or you find yourself at roughly 20, 30 of those stacks. Fnatic trying to demand the space, though, by invading heavily onto the Shrine and already setting the portals up through Shrimpy and the Portal Mastery. Crosby needs to be careful here. He's actually followed and gets thrown in again and goes down just before Alex is able to save him here. Splendor doing what he can, but the counter kill against Mena as Gul'dan falls. So one for one trade here in the middle. One for one trade, but Splendor might be next here as Last Hope goes for the chase. Dragon Form will pop off and he actually gets some movement speed and is able to escape out. But Fnatic turns their attention over to the Shrine, and right now they're starting to tie up. 10 yeah. to 10, but should take a lead. And one of the problems, of course, that Splendor was forced to pop the Dragon Queen early here. Normally you're trying to wait a bit until you are roughly at 20 stacks, and then you can try and secure the Punisher for yourself. So far that hasn't really worked out for him, but they are still fighting for it, and Fnatic is only a little bit ahead here, but trying again with a portal to set something up. Nice interrupt through Reyna as Shrimpy was attempting to make that play. But Fnatic is taking the lead here. Here comes the portal, they invade deep, go for Crosby, and try to secure the kill against Reyna. And he gets hit with a scroll. Crosby trying to retreat, gets away with a little bit of HP. Fnatic keeping up with the minions, though. Sits up at 39, need one more, and they'll be able to grab the Punisher. Alex Approji low on health, too. Cannot escape, and he will fall. Another kill for Fnatic. Fnatic with three kills against one, they get the Punisher. They have also completed the quest talent on Shrimpy, so Medivh is now in a position where he can play a bit more aggressive here. And this is a really tough moment because you can definitely set up another play with a portal here. And that's exactly what we're seeing. Diving in and out, trying to create some space. Rema anchoring the side here, but we already have Gul'dan at the bot lane, trying to push a lane through, and Sonya has transitioned all the way up to the top. The monkeys are holding in there, though. They do bait over the Punisher. It will get cleared up, and they don't lose too much in that front wall. And they're close in experience. About a half a level behind, but still on level 7. Monkey should be able to continue soaking up. And level 10, things should get a little bit better for them. First off, Yurel becomes much easier uh, to survive as she gets that Ardent Defender available. And then, of course, you have the Cleansing Flame to help him out. And then, of course, the Earthquake, which should make it easier for Raynor to escape. So far, he's been holding on a little bit longer than I expected. A fight or flight really helping out at level 4. Just eventually he gets taken out because Fnatic has been relentless in diving. But if he gets a few more additional ways of help coming his way, he should be able to escape. Now, Fnatic still has a bit, pretty big advantage when it comes to structures on the map here. It's actually surprising to see that they're not farther ahead in experience, mainly because they missed out on a wave or two, but they did very well taking structures down and pressuring the front walls in particular. So right now, Fnatic still slightly ahead here, and they are going to try and invade that bot lane. It's a four versus three, though. Garrus is now rotating in, and thanks to the portal, he can go on the point, throws one out, Marke dies, and even with Splendor securing the camp, the monkeys walk away with one dead hero. Do you think Dragon Queen really worth it there? Do you have to live or die on top of this point? I can see them maybe feeling like they have to get a kill or two because they're a little bit behind in experience. But that feels like it's a little bit of a waste there. I mean, Dragon Queen should kind of come up towards the later stage uh, of the shrine. It'll be close. However, Maki falls. Fnatic able to jump a little bit more in experience thanks to an additional kill. And they're about to hit 10 first. They have the leading kills now. They get the early level 10, and of course, then a lot of the setups are going to work here, especially through the Wall of Chance, the taunt that Garrosh has. Once that we see that combo off with the portal, things are going to start to become a bit dire for the backline of Monkey Menagerie, especially with Gul'dan most likely going to follow it up with uh, Corruption. And looking at this too, we also have Poison Spirit level 7 for Sonya. This whole idea of just a leading Rainer off the face of the earth is. Certainly one that Fnatic is buying all into, and that Poison Spear really shows that. Getting that upfront damage as soon as possible. If you can land on a Rainer, or whoever does get tossed in, it can even be a Thrall here too. He pops pretty quickly. That continues to set up that deletion button. We have Hyperion coming in, Lifebender as well for Alex Straza. Lifebender getting more and more popular as of late, getting that 300 health per a tick. Yeah. has been wonderful. I mean, Heavy Slux life. has been taken for Reyna on level 7. It's actually a talent that I haven't really seen played yet in the European HCC at least. Normally we always have them specking into the trade on level 7 and trying to get uh, the trade talking a slow too. So that's not really the case here. I guess it's more the idea to create a bit more space for Reyna with the increased distance that you have on your penetrating round. So when, for example, Sonya jumps onto Crosby and is able to close in, that would be a talent that really helps you to increase the distance again and stay a bit safer. Can help you also when that portal is set up to dive upon you. So definitely a bit of an adjustment in Crosby's side to catering towards the composition and the heroes that Fnatic is playing here. 
Fnatic already sets up on the Shrine. It just now spawns. They have always pushing out middle and top lane. Also, 15 seconds, and we're going to see the trade active again for Alex Straza. So timing works out for Splendor here, using it early against uh, on the camp. He will still be able to use it over this fight, at least in the middle of it. But Fnatic, again, already attempting to claim the spot here. But it's a heavy front line on the side of the monkeys that they go up against. And that front line is holding well. 14 to 12 right now, and here it is, the Dragon Queen pop. Sony on the right takes the Wrath of the Berserker and will start putting some damage out, but Monkeys, even using the Hyperion here, are going to clear out the Shrine and maybe try to find a kill. Breeze jumped on the bottom right at the same time, Last Hope makes a little bit of space in the back line. Big Stay while Wildson comes out, will hit two members with the Corruption to follow up, but Monkeys have done it! They have pushed Fnatic away! Yeah, and also Remabala surviving here was actually quite impressive because he got really taunted into the lineup of Fnatic and they were attempting to take him down, but just in time was able to jump out, get the Avatar and also the heals from Alex Straza. I was actually questioning at the start a bit if it's really worth to stack Hyperion together with the Dragon Queen the way that they did. I feel if they would have spaced it out a bit better, they could have gotten more out of it. But they secure the Punisher, and that's all that you want to do at the end of the day here. The problem, of course, is that Ural at the top lane has now to deal with that camp that is pushing in for Fnatic, and that camp has already done severe damage, and it's likely going to result in the fort falling. Is it going to be a fort here? Minions working on it. Alex with the last second stun, and they are able to save this fort, just I mean, barely. That thing is dead. It's dead. Yeah, like, you don't need the experience now right away, and the only thing that you need is any kind of spell, and this thing is gonna fall. So, yeah, that camp has been worth it a lot. Make in trouble. Damage in the front. Alex Proji stepping in to try and buy some space. Mex is gonna portal away. Arden Defender gets used, and Last Hope in the front. Just spin, spin, spin. Also putting damage on top of Rimmer. Rimmer able to escape just barely, but that poison is ticking. It was also a really nice control here, or a control attempt at the portal, but that didn't quite work out for them. Ah, stay a while and listen, the horrify at the same time. The kill against Alex Strava, though, and they are looking for the second, but Breeze can't quite close the distance. 13 also connects there for Fnatic as they get that fort. Some monkeys back away after losing Alex Straza. But they did buy some Brightening Room with that first punish. Oh, hang on! Another combo comes out, and that is the Rainer issue. No mobility. If you get caught, you're done. This was Jimmy. That was Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy gone now. As Fnatic continue to pick him over. And this will give him time to build. Four here in the middle. They continue to open the map. Might get another pick here as well. Ooh, nice little knockback there from Alex Proji. As Breeze is about to toss him. Yeah, but now we have lower 13. It's actually still surprising to me that the monkeys are able to keep experience like this. We have Sonya now at the bot lane. Last hope trying to go for another camp. But it's only a level elite. With the way this has been going, I could have totally seen Fnatic snowballing this even harder than they are already doing. They have level 13 talents now. They have, okay, by now the one and a half level lead. Pick off another structure. And they are about to destroy the last outer ring structure on the monkeys. Two forts are already down in the entire wall too. And down here at the bot lane, we're seeing the fort also starting to drop significantly in hit points. So if they at any point rotate in, they can drop this as well. Now with that being said, if monkeys can win another Punisher. There are force available to be taken away from Fnatic. They can give them that experience. They've been staying so well near them in experience. Now, of course, you did mention that level lead that Fnatic is starting to now really be rewarded with because of yeah. these picks. But monkeys have a chance to bite back. And Fnatic, building towards level 16, shouldn't have it in time for the Shrine phase. So there will be even talent here fights. And monkeys, they showed on the last fight that they're able to handle it. I mean, for Fnatic, it's also Echoed Corruption that's going to be online pretty soon. 34 stacks currently on Mana. True. Six more. We'll be able to finish that up. Here's that shrine activating to the top. Last hope is making sure to push out that lane as much as they can. Get those minions moving forward. That way they can have vision on their opponents when they start to move in. Fnatic on the bottom left is looking for anyone that might be rotating down. As you see, Mediv said it being a possible gank, but with it being Urel, you don't really want to portal towards that as they rotate towards the top. Yeah, and of course for Fnatic, this is also about level 16. They don't really have to go in immediately. They can try and stall out some time, but they're going for Muradin instead. And Muradin is already really low, and it forces their opponents to go into the earlier Hyperion here. So with, I mean, with the portals, you can easily move out away from that. That's one big cooldown that just got burned on the monkey's side. And he's not the only one. Muradin himself had to pop Avatar too. Yeah, two big heroics down. Was Fnatic didn't have to spin any here. 
Big one for them is Leyline and Seal. Last Hope goes in, gets the Spear on top of Make, he'll take some damage, Splendor provides the heal. Alex Apogee already trying to work on those minions, 11 to 3, as the Dragon is now popped, but those Corruption Stacks are starting to hurt. Yeah, they definitely do. I mean, the Monkeys take the lead in the Stacks, but now he has Fortify, and they're going in deep, trying to get the kill. Crosby is already in trouble, and he's not the only one. Make is low. Last Hope, on the other hand, also about to fall. The Leyline comes out and saves Make, if anything, but the rest of the team is so low. Thrall included, and Mena is just trying to find the kill, and here comes the stay in while and listen to end it all. Fnatic just lined them up, and the rest of them come in here and start getting some kills. There will be the third one as Schwimpy brings in that last second damage. Splendor attempting to do what he can here on the back line, but he eventually will fall as Monkeys lose four. Fnatic will be able to get the Punisher, and they can start pushing the top lane. A two level lead, 10 kills against one. Muradin, the only survivor, currently sitting in the middle, trying to help the cam to take the fort down. Well, nothing, but right now, if you look at that fight here, the ley line actually delaying things just a little bit, but then afterwards, let's stay a while and get wrecked from Smexy. Just dominating. I would have loved to see Mena having the time to move to the top and get just a corruption. Get one, one corruption and well, Fell Flame just through to just annihilate everything in one fell sweep. That would have been a perfect Tronda Al as well. Just four immediate hits post 13, all that damage. Kaldor, ugh getting all heated thinking about it. I mean, why don't we just use Stay and listen to set them up for Ragnaros Lava Wave? Oh my, the way you think, you are evolving, man. I love it. Another engage here on the bottom. As Murden gets focused down, he doesn't have a chance to move his hero. Taunt comes out, and Rimmer loses on the front line immediately. This yeah. keep will be cleaned up, and the Punisher is going straight for the core. The Fnatic is going for the core as well, especially with Sonya in the midst. They can, all, of course, make that happen quite easily, and here it comes. This is going to be lights out for the Monkey Menagerie in game number one, unless there's a small miracle happening. The Taunt comes out, the Ley Line Seal, they're just popping everything here. This game's over as Fnatic claims victory in game number one. Monkey's looking a little better than expected, but the leads and the kills coming in here from Fnatic were enough. Did they? 